my name is Christian Lee. I'm part of Aztec Music Group, and we're here with. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? We're Innerwave. What up? Yeah. Oh, oh fuck. Hey. Right. Anyways, <laughs> how you guys doing today? Pretty good, chilling. Amazing. You know, out here in San Diego. Excited. This isn't the first time you guys have been to San Diego, right? No, I think it's third. Maybe third or fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Been here a few times. Okay. And I know you guys, you know, you guys are from L.A., which isn't too far, too. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, being from San Diego, I got to ask this, you know, for, like, one of the things that I love about San Diego is, like, the Mexican food. Uh -huh. And so I want to know, man, California burrito, do you guys think over underrated? <laughs> it's it's uh, overrated. What? Overrated. Really? Because <laughs> <Overrated. laughs> you guys don't have on. any good ones in L.A., that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. But besides the point, okay, so let's do another fun question, too. Okay, and so, you know, you guys, you know, you sing, you guys played music together. Have you, both of you were in the band since what? Middle, uh, middle school? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And here, a question for you guys, I think it's a fun one. It's, uh, like, for karaoke, what, got, what song would you guys sing if it was more popular? Like, for example, for me, I think it would be Vampire by Dr. Dog. I think that'd okay. be a good one to sing. The song is not that popular. That's not that popular? Yeah, that, would... that you would want to sing for karaoke. Okay. Uh, Nati yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's this artist, his name is Nati the King. He has a song called We Want Mo. It's a 2018 bop. Yeah. All right? yeah, definitely, definitely a bop. So, yeah. Definitely a bop. It was only last year, too. Yeah, only last year. Yeah. Not that popular. We need it to be more popular. Yeah. Let's get it out okay. there, guys. Nati the King. Blow up. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Eli? You got it? Uh, I, I'm gonna be with him singing that one. Okay. It's gonna be like a double thing, so it's extra loud. Huh? Yeah, 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 do it, come on. Yeah. We'll start harmonizing and all that. That'd be great. Okay. And right now, uh, I, I don't know if you can tell by the audio, but right now we're in a venue, and you know, I know when you guys first started coming up to you guys played, you know, like at smaller venues like The Smell or you know house shows in general. So I, what I want to ask is like, what's the contrast between you know playing like the smaller venues or house shows? compared to like the bigger ones, like where we are right now? One is a lot safer, not just for people, <laughs> yeah. but for your instruments and all your oh, equipment. That's Very one, true. Yeah. You know, we used to play like on dark ground, and <laughs> fucking do grass and that. Like, we used shit. to bump into our shit yeah, and like, you know? they don't realize that we're playing and they're stepping on the pedal boards yeah. and unplugging our cables. Oh my gosh, and, yeah. You know, that's what heard about that. Yeah, yeah, you know. There's more room on stage because we have a lot of equipment. Uh, each of us have like at least two or three things with us, whether it's keyboard, pedal board, you know, amps and everything. So I feel like now on these bigger stages, we have room to like be comfortable and not like bump into each other, you know, sardine our way through the stage. And it sounds a whole lot better. Yeah. yeah. You know, you yeah. got a sound guy, monitor guy, you know, works out. And we get to, you know, be real picky with our EQs and all that. <laughs> yeah. It is nice. But is there any more like benefits of like going to the smaller ones or just playing like at a house? I guess the intimacy, you know, that's always yeah. gonna be a thing with smaller venues and smaller shows that you're actually face to face with a lot of people, you know. <clears throat> but I feel like even a lot of the bigger venues, the people in the front, uh, you know, obviously are more rowdy, you yeah. know, and have more of like an amplified energy towards you. But uh. Yeah, I feel like the biggest shows also have this bit of intimacy, uh, just because the energy is bounced back so much more. Everything's amplified, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just everything feels bigger. Okay. And so, I've listened to you guys since I first heard about you guys when I saw you guys at Tropicalia. Mm -hmm. Oh. And that was pretty cool. It was my first time. It was really, you guys were great. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That, was, that was really fun. And I could tell, like, I've listened back to each of your albums, too, and some of your EPs. Like, you guys... Have significantly grown like throughout like you know each album each LP but I heard uh, from somewhere else that you guys first started as like Christian rock band or something <laughs> you heard correct <laughs> and so how did how'd you guys you know switch from like that to with, like the type of music you guys are playing right now I think, I think it was just like maturity as a person you know evolution yeah. you know but that was like one year into it though it yeah like, yeah that was it was very brief 2007 yeah so, yeah yeah I don't know what made you guys want to play like Christian rock though in the beginning? Um, so our singer Pablo, his family's Christian. Like his uh, dad is a, a <coughs> I forget, I might butcher this, pastor, is it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher, and, pastor. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he comes from that background and that's why he learned how to play like drums, guitar and all that. So it kind of just seeped into 
our our process of how to like make music and like practice together and stuff like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think uh, you guys will ever bring out one of those tunes from the early eighties? Uh, play it now? Nah, it's long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Burned. Yeah. Okay. And so all of you guys, you guys met during middle school, right? Well, us, yeah, us two and the lead singer Pablo. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, and then uh, were you all living in LA too? Because I heard, mm -hmm. I thought you lived in Long Beach, right? That's where no. the Jews. No, I went to school, went to, school to Long Beach, Long Beach oh, okay. for like two and a half years. And I used to live in Long Beach uh, around okay. the time where he was going to school there. Oh, that's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And I heard growing up you wanted to be like a baseball player, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, in, in high school, uh, I stopped playing with the band for four years because uh, we were practicing after school, and after school I had baseball practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, during that, that short span of high school, I, was, I wasn't in the band. But after high school, starting college. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. yeah, I'm back. And I heard you majored, or you wanted to be like a geologist in general, right? <laughs> Yeah. So like, what made you want to do that? Uh, I remember like applying for college. Uh, the only thing I thought that I liked to do, you know, was like go camping and shit. Mm -hmm. So the only major that had to do with like outdoorsy stuff was like geology, so. Okay, and that's like a type of science, it. right? Yeah, yeah. And I was into science and math and shit, and it's a whole bunch of that too. So. It Speaking was... of science too, I think I heard uh, you were in like AP Chem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there. <laughs> Forty minutes late every day. <laughs> uh, high as hell, just sitting in the back, just drawing on my damn test papers. I think I think for my final, I drew the devil on the back of like a scantron and turned it in. Because the teacher knew, Miss Usher knew that like there, there was no way I was supposed to be in that class. <laughs> she knew I did not care. <laughs> did you ever take the AP exam though? No, because you had to pay for it. Oh, oh yeah, that's you did. right. Yeah, so yeah, I was like, right. why am I? Yeah. <laughs> what am I gonna even good do? Good call, good call, good call. <laughs> Just not, I'll stay home. Mm -hmm. And I could like tell like I did a little bit of digging and then like I think the song you guys recommended for karaoke is that a rap song? Yeah, or, yeah. Okay, yeah. and I could tell like you know. It was interesting because when I was looking up you guys a little bit too, because you guys are like an indie rock type of band, but you guys actually played like at some like type of like hip hop events too, like oh, something yeah. like Banana. Banana, yeah. yeah, with Verbs. Yeah, Verbs yeah. is the homie. <laughs> yeah. And so how, how did that happen though? Because, you know, nothing wrong with mixing genres, but it just uh -huh. seems like a weird collab. It was, it was because we met a friend in high school. Her name was Annie. And we separated, you know, because high school does that to you after, afterwards anyways. After you graduate high school, you separate with friends. And she, I guess, ended up meeting Verbs during this time. And she hit me up and was like, hey, we're throwing like this thing. Like, we want you to play. And I was like, all right, tight. You know, like, we were searching for shows. We were down to play anything at that time. And so we showed up, and it's like this, like, hip-hop night kind of thing, you know? Every Tuesday, <laughs> um, Bananas. And we're the only band that played. But it really, it kind of caught everybody's eye and was like, oh, shit, like, what is this, you know? And... I feel like that allowed us to kind of like seep into the hip-hop world just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And since we like hip-hop so much and we use hip-hop kind of sounds, mm -hmm. you know, in our personal sound, that it just kind of flowed really well, you know. I think we played it maybe like four other times. And it was always like, oh, this is tight, you know, this mm -hmm. is the band. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the night, yeah. yeah. it's the band, let them do their thing. <laughs> and I mean... I did this, I'm pretty sure like most kids did this as a kid, you know, they write rap lyrics. Uh -huh. And I used to write a little bit too, right? Etron, <laughs> Eli used to rap. <laughs> no, it was, nah, it was a joke. like as a complete joke, <laughs> like just for fun. Like we'd be bored in the garage, you know. We have all this equipment to like write music and stuff. So of course for fun, we'll just do like stupid little rap songs, you know. But yeah, no, it doesn't exist. But low key, we remember almost all the lyrics. Yeah. Spit <laughs> <laughs> a verse. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. I'm surprised you guys are making music now instead of like a type of like, you know, Rage Against Machine type of songs, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mixing it up? <laughs> sure, we might. You never know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, maybe next album. Speaking of like albums that were like your music in general, you guys just dropped a EP a week, I didn't believe like last week, right? Yeah. yeah. Like WYA, where are you at, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so what was like the dot process or like the creativity like behind that? Well, part of it, uh, how there's a lot of more like electronic elements in it. Is uh, because when we were on tour with Triathlon last February and March, our uh, U-Haul trailer got stolen um, when we were at a show. Like, we were using the other drum kit. What? So when they stole the, the trailer, they, they unhitched it, put it on a truck, and took it off. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> since they took the drum kit uh, for a period of time after that, 
we didn't have a live drum kit, so Pablo was doing a lot of uh, production, using like sample sounds, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, to match those uh, sample drums, will be more like synth bass. We got a Gene got a synth bass, and uh, just kind of piling up more electronic sounds over that. That's kind of how it got like its aesthetic in a way. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a blessing and a curse. Yeah. 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 We got okay. through it. We got a new drum kit now, so. We're good. Perfect. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then you guys talked about, like, you uh, were on tour of Triathlon, and now you guys have been touring with Hot Flash Heat Wave. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was, our, that was our first yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. And was... then you guys have been touring with uh, Bane's World. Michael Sayer. Michael Sayer. And so, like, did you guys pick up anything from, like, being on tour with any of these people? Oh, yeah. Great friendships. Very strong friendships. Very awesome. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've been blessed to be able to, like, make really good friends with everyone we've been tour on tour with. Um, and also during the Dog Days tour, us two were playing with Michael Sayer as well. Mm. So we had double duty that, that tour. Mm, I did hear about that a little bit too. Uh, we built our stage stamina. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh. All right. And then another thing too, uh, you guys, you know, you guys were part of that legendary show at uh, the Observatory up in Santa Ana with your childhood career, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. That was on my mom's birthday. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And so what was that like, too? Because, you know, I've talked to, like, Baines, or I've talked to Katsu Oso. They said that was, like, a crazy night for them. So what was it for you guys? Same. There's a lot of homies. Yeah, because, like you said, you know, was like... a crazy lineup. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And we're, I think we were put on, like, last minute, right? Yeah, we're put, yeah the whole like, thing was put on, like, two days prior. Or something. <laughs> yeah. And, it just happened. Yeah. That night was really crazy. I, I got pretty much... No, no, no. Oh. I ran into the Brockhampton thing. Yeah. So at the time, I think they released uh, the third. Oh, uh, Saturation third, Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And I was, like, super hyped about it, you know, and I was, and, you know, you're I'm partying practically. I already <laughs> finished my set. There's, no, there's nothing else to do but party. So then I run into this Brockhampton pit, and I'm pretty much just stuck. We're all pretty much stuck there. Oh, yeah. And at I some know. point, I, for, I forget what the song's name is, but the song came on, and everybody fell. Like, oh. we all toppled on top of each other, you know? <laughs> And I was like, no, hold on, hold on, <laughs> you know, trying to hold on to each other, holding on to nothing, really. <laughs> Dude, I, after that, after that set, he came out, and I gave him a hug, and like, were well, you wearing like a, a jean, jean jacket, jacket, and yeah. it was completely soaked, like, as if you dipped it in water. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. Okay. Memorable night. I can tell you guys have a lot of stories together, and you guys have known each other for so long. And, you know, I feel like you guys, you know, are friends, but you guys are kind of like a little family in a way, too. Oh, of course, yeah. And so I just got to ask this, man. Do you guys have any pet peeves about each other? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You want to share any? Or... Share some shit. Uh, off the top of my head, it's shit. Um, let's see. Forgetting stuff? Or it's like, you know, we'll leave somewhere and like, oh, this is somebody's. Guess who it is, you know? Um... Or it's like, oh shit, I forgot this, you know, then we gotta go back, pick it up, or like, uh, uh, things like that. Today I woke up late as hell. Oh yeah. I was supposed to be <laughs> at the at the band call at 10.30, and he wakes me up at 11 a.m., and I'm in my bed. And I'm like, what the hell, what, what am I even supposed to be doing, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's just human shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. It's like some sibling shit. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, yeah, nothing too venomous. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, and we're running a little bit low on time, and so the last question I got to ask for you guys is, uh, if you guys were to place yourself in the band with like another musician or celebrity, who would it be? Oh shit! Probably like Aziz Ansari. <laughs> 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 oh shit! <laughs> Liam Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson, huh? <laughs> playing yeah. guitar. <laughs> His special set of skills. That, yeah, yeah. yeah, he does. He yeah. loves that. That would be All hard. Right. Thanks for taking time to do interview, yeah, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Before we uh, turn off the camera, though, where can we find your music? Where can we find you guys on social media? You can find us on Instagram. You can Google us. You can find us on Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, <clears throat> Interwave. All right, and just looking at the camera, too, you guys have anything left to say to the fans? We love you. Very much. And we hope you love yourself. Yes, most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, yo.